Hello, I'm Toy Care, and let's face it, travel is expensive. It costs so much to go somewhere, let alone to stay there, and then to eat, and all of these activities start to drain you financially, and you start to feel like it's just an exercise in how much money can you spend to have a good time. That's not how it needs to be, especially not here in London, a city which is filled with things which are free, and so today I want to show you five of those which you need to visit while you're here. I'll admit I do have a preference for history, green spaces, and animals, and that sort of thing, but you're going to probably enjoy at least one of the things on this list, because the biggest, perhaps, of all of them is the British Museum. Although, to get in, we're going to quickly need to go through some security. Yeah, the excessive security is a little bit of an Americanism, but obviously this place needs it because it's very controversial. So, the way I sell people in this place is regardless of what you think about how the British Empire expanded and maybe bought some things, maybe took some things, maybe there's a lot of different ways that things were procured here, but so many things in this place are controversial, and whether you think it's great or bad, uh, whether you think it should be handed back or held here, the fact that you can see these things for free, or rather, I guess, at the British taxpayer's expense, is incredible. Things like the Rosetta Stone, what finally unlock hieroglyphics, things like the Elgin Marbles, all these grand artifacts of history, you can visit them right here, and this is one of the few points in history where you can visit so many grand artifacts from society all in one place, and genuinely for free. Oh, thanks. No, sorry kind of ties into the security thing, right? But, um, <laughs> sorry, I thought I'd be stopped. I don't know what the rules on recording here are, but apparently it's A-OK. -okay. And yeah, the fact is that you can come here, you can record it, you can take photos of it if you really want to. That is absolutely incredible. And so that's why the British Museum is the first free thing I recommend. It's right in central London. It's surrounded by all the other things you're gonna be doing. It's probably a 10 minute walk from something you're already in London for. Just give it a visit. Come look at some stolen artifacts or some well-negotiated artifacts of governments who sold them and then changed their mind later, but we wouldn't give it back to. Whichever way you wanna see it, it doesn't matter about the politics. It matters that they're grand artifacts and a lot of other people care about that apparently. I can't believe this whole time, this whole time, I was picturing marbles like the, like the ones you throw, but obviously Greek marbles means this type of Greek marble. Whoopsie. <laughs> By the way, if you're going from the first thing on this list to the second, you're probably going to come through this, the Seven Dials. This is known as the Seven Dials because seven separate streets all intersect here. It's something you don't get in any centrally planned city because it's absolutely insane. You look at any of these buildings and the weird shapes you get just don't make any sense, but it is a roundabout. It's a fully functional street too. It's weird watching cars try to go around it. It's just one of these cool London monuments. And also it's a place where you'll find all sorts of cool uh, places. There's a, there's a conveyor belt place where cheese goes around instead of sushi. There's all sorts of fun things that you'll only find here. And it's right between the British Museum where we started and the second thing on this list, which is of course, St. James Park. So there are three major big parks in London. There's Hyde Park, there's Green Park, and there's St. James Park, and they're all connected. And St. James is the smallest of the three. So you might look at a map and say it's the least significant, but to me, it's actually the exact reverse. One, this is the closest to Westminster and Parliament and all the kind of parliamentary stuff. If you like seeing the real side of history that's like still being used, Buckingham Palace is just up the road, for example. So that is a thing that you might enjoy about the area. But the second thing that I like is that there's birds everywhere. Not only weird birds, so that's a black swan. I think they are, uh, you're Black swan events used to be a thing like when pigs fly, when you found black swans was meant to be the same thing. But then we actually found them in Australia and here they are just hanging out. There's a weird heron in that tree over there. There's a bunch of, every animal here seems to be incredibly friendly to humans because of years of training. So you put your hand out and then look at this, there's a goose that's gonna not come towards me to ruin my point. But the point is, is you can have a lot of interesting interactions with animals here, but it's also one of the best maintained of the parks. There's pelicans here. I always forget just how huge pelicans are, by the way. Also, that is Buckingham Palace just over there. So like incredibly close by. Get a little bit of both in your life, why don't you? Big birds, ridiculously sized birds. There's a lot of just weird animals that you probably won't see where you're used to because there's a lot of waterfowl in the UK. And then there's also just some, that I guess we brought from across the world. I guess it's kind of like the British Museum, but like better. No, one, no one's asking for their black swan back, but they really should be. And yeah, I, I really like this park's location as well. It's a nice one to kind of just have a respite from five minutes from all the central stuff uh, or on the way from something else that you're doing. Uh, great, great tube access to it. It's, it's a good place. Would recommend 10 out of 10. However, if you uh, feel like central and between stuff is not necessarily what you're looking for, Maybe you'll like number three. So the third thing I'm going to recommend is a little bit further out than the rest. It's all the way in Zone 3 at Forest Hill, but it's worth going to in my opinion, because although London has a lot of great free museums, this is a free museum set up by someone called Frederick Horniman. It's the Horniman Museum, which is funny, ha ha ha. But it is also a very interesting story because Frederick Horniman was a very, very wealthy individual who just loved to collect things. And so at some point in his life, he just decided, why don't I open up my house and make it a museum? And that's precise what it is. You can explore his house as a museum. It's, by the way, when I say house, you're picturing something 
something quite small. It is very, very big. It's a real size museum, but it is entirely free alongside his gardens, which by the way are insane. You get a view of London and the Shard in the background. There's, there's a market there on Sundays too, I'd recommend. Uh, but then in his gardens, you get to see things like alpacas, because I guess he loved alive animals too, but you get to see like a, a whole bunch of live animals. And it's kind of fun to me because museums do have a little bit of like a repetitiveness of like learning's great. And I, I really do value them in that way. Uh, there's a cultural influence you can get from that. But then also, how can you not smile when you're looking at an alpaca or feeding an alpaca or seeing all of the lovely things in the garden. I really do like this. I'd recommend, even if it's a tiny bit further out coming here and you might enjoy while being in the area, all the sorts of other things that you get while being in a little bit more of real London. You know, the London, the tour, you know, someone might go to. If you're on the weekends here, you might like that a little bit for local vibe. Otherwise, just go to the Natural History Museum. It's also free. It's one of the best in the world. Uh, it's in Kensington in zone one. But yeah, this is what I would recommend as my third free thing to do in London. Seriously, while I'm on the way out and the weather has changed to rain, by the way, it's kind of a close thing to visiting a castle, except like a castle a dude just decided to live in. Also, I love this about anything historic in London, but you look at the castle, it's so grand, and then you look at the house next door and it's like some generic council flat. I love that about the city, and you get to see things like that, especially when you go slightly more off the beaten path. Speaking of off the beaten path, let's go to the opposite place right now. Before we go to the fourth thing, I think it's important to mention what we're not including on the list, which is basically sites, right? I think points of interest are really cool to walk past and see, just like the, uh, the the Seven Dials roundabout, for example. However, I wouldn't make a specific, you know, day out of my way to go, look, here's the Parliament building, Westminster Abbey, it's just over there too. They're really interesting to look at on the way to stuff, and you might be able to route something on the way, but I would never say that they're a free thing to do, because it's free to look at anything. There's a line of people over here looking at a phone box, taking photos in it. You can do anything for if you want to, if you're just willing to look at it and do the normal expected thing. Uh, and so, you know, is that normal expected actually? Maybe take that back. So the fourth option on this list is gonna be another one of these like things that is more than just uh, you look once and go, yep, that's it. Uh, because I think it's a little bit greater than that, but it requires getting on the tube from here at Westminster over to Tower Hill, which is where you'll find the Tower of London. This is one of the most iconic parts of London. It's the big castle in the city where the king used to hang out outside the city, funnily enough, because this was actually just outside the wall, which is over here. So a fun part of London's history you might not know is what you call London today, what you fly into today, is actually a metropolitan county. It's kind of a bunch of boroughs that have merged together to be a city sort of thing, but the city of London is roughly a square mile. It's a very small, tiny area that held out against the government of the rest of the country for a very long time. And the way they did that was with a big wall. Seriously, look at the size of this thing compared to me. They built this in 200 AD, which really can be hard to comprehend, but that is older than your country. In fact, it's arguably older than my country, the UK. Like our oldest king goes back only about a thousand years. And so it goes back another 800 years past that. And although this has been repaired over the you know 12th century to the 17th century, the fact that something lasts that long is wild by itself. And it gets even more wild when you realize that walking down the wall and seeing something so old and so honestly incredible, it's like a fun story to me, you can immediately walk over to the Tower of London. This is the Tower of London. It's a very short distance away. In fact, it actually intersected the wall because it was still really built at the edge of the city. And it's, an, it's actually where they still saw, I believe the crown jewels amongst a few other things. And it's one of those incredible historic parts of this country that again, likely older than anything you know or anything nearby where you live, which might be fun if you live in the new world or even a part of the old world, which has only been recently uh, developed. But even cooler than this, have you ever, do you know London Bridge, that famous bridge that goes like this? It's definitely called London Bridge. Don't, don't let everyone else fool you. That is actually found just over here. So if you follow the Tower of London round, which by the way, uh, you can go inside of, it does have a fee. Even on the free days, they now charge a, you know, a small token fee to let you get in. But if you follow that round, you'll find this bridge, which is definitely in London. You might think, oh, it's the bridge that's at the Tower of London. So what would you call that? Like a, maybe like a tower bridge? No, trust me, I've been on the internet and they assure me that this is London Bridge. Sure, there might be a bridge called London Bridge over there, but this is the real London Bridge. And uh, so on London, <laughs> On Tower Bridge, sorry, I can't can't keep this bit up anymore. It's gonna drive me crazy, make me look insane. But on this particular bridge, it's uh, famous for having one really cool site, which is that sometimes, uh, it's, uh, the schedule is published in advance. I'll leave a link down below or uh, put it on screen if you're a masochist who likes to type out URLs that way. But um, they actually have a schedule of when they need to raise it because legally speaking, this bridge has to cede right away to the boats that go under it. And even though all the boats that go under it are just tour boats, that go under it specifically,
specifically to make it open, it does have to open for every one of those, and it's entirely free to watch. It's probably not free to be on one of those boats, but you can take a boat underneath it if you don't mind the public transport costs, but something that is entirely free to do is look at that. But multiple times a day, this bridge goes up and then becomes entirely inaccessible. Funnily enough, it causes huge traffic jams, and also funnily enough, in the exact opposite theme of this video, which is things you might not think are free, but actually are, um, if you want to go above the bridge while it is uh, opened up, because it used to open up a lot more, there are these big walkways over the top, but you can't use those without paying to go in the museum now, which means, funnily enough, it's a free thing to look at, but only if you don't mind being inconvenienced for about five minutes, which is fun to me. But yeah, the view from here is incredible of central London. Imagine if it wasn't shiny sun in your face you can see the shard you can see the central london you can see the city over there the tower of london right in front it's incredible the things you can see from here but yeah that is why this is one of the best things that you can see in london for free so the fifth and final free thing to do is maybe pushing the bounce a little bit because it is the shard and i know what you're thinking wow that's an expensive building and if you're not thinking that you really need to think it it is i think it's 32 pounds if you book a ticket in advance it's really really wildly expensive to go at the top just to see a big view it, to me it's like it's really worth paying that amount just to look at things however there is a sneaky way around that you can go to any of the restaurants and bars in the shard and you can go up to their floors and the price of admission is only the food that you buy it is often very marked up food or drinks you might pay say 17 pounds for a cocktail but 17 pounds for a cocktail where you get a drink as well as the view versus 32 pounds for just the view it seems like a good deal right however in case that's not good enough for you there is something called the sky garden which is the same principle if you got there and you can buy food and drinks i've gone up there for that reason before but also every monday they release new tickets where you can go up there just for free so as part of the condition of getting their building approved the sky garden has to let something like 200 to 300 people visit every single week for free and you can just go up there sign up for free or you can go up and you can you know order the cheapest things that you'd be buying anyway and it's effectively like paying a small premium to get an amazing view much better than 32 pounds and being crowded with a bunch of people that are all doing like this and going crazy that's not my idea of fun Maybe it's your idea of fun though. The view up here is just astounding. There aren't many places in London you get views. It's quite a flat city outside of the skyscraper areas. And so to be in one of those and look at the rest is amazing. You can see the fourth item on the list. There's Tower Bridge. I hope I'm pointing at it correctly. And in fact, I guess you could probably see the third item on the list. If we could see the shard from that market, you can probably see the market from the shard. It's it's cool to have these views while you're doing something as simple as eating or drinking. Uh, maybe not too much of either of those things though, given the prices, but still a lot, lot cheaper and arguably free if you, you can be your and come up here and just be like, oh, actually, I've changed my mind after looking if you want to, probably. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm going to go get uh, my token drink. Anyway, I hope that you've all enjoyed this video very much. If you have, you know what you to do. You're on the internet. You know how you can show appreciation for that. But I'd really appreciate it if you considered subscribing to learn more about this city in which I live and love and indeed uh, its houses and finances and whatever else we do on this channel. It's a fun time and I hope to see you in the next one of these I do. The number of people who have turned their head and gone like, ooh, what's that guy doing talking to a camera? So if you could subscribe just for that reason alone, it'd be appreciated. But for now, goodbye. I'm walking the traffic.